Hey YouTube world, how's it going? Uh, and this is another episode of Cool's Comic Book Basement. I'm your host, Chase and Cool, and you best believe that I'm Cool is my last name. Yeah, so, we got a lot to talk about, so on the show. Yeah, okay. First on the list, uh, I just finished this. This is uh, uh, the sequel to Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. This is Dark Knight Strikes Back. Uh, and I start off the story in the, uh, Dark Knight Returns. It's, uh, it's, uh, the future, and there's new bulls against superheroes, and there's mutants everywhere, and Batman been retired for, like, ten years, but it feels like he needs to come back, and he's an older, uh, grumpier, more violent, darker, Batman now. And the first one at the end, Superman's told by the president to take Batman down because they're afraid uh, that he's just going to bring uh, more destruction, you know, trying to save and trying to do what he thinks of, you know, there's Batman law. You know, him just keeping order to his world and his uh, Gotham City and they just think they need to put a stop to Batman. Like I said, there's new rules, and it's a different world that we know. And Frank Miller, who don't people who don't know who Frank Miller and they're gonna watch uh, Sin City or the movie 300. Frank Miller is a comic writing god. So this is a really good treat. He takes all superheroes and who's been out for a while and makes them a hundred percent cooler. This is a note this is a very you know this is also a very popular Batman story and it proves my point about Batman. Once again in this one proves my point how Batman's the number one superhero. I know Paul is right here right, right now, he's like he's not super, there's nothing super about him. But his card marks him uh Labor Sims as a superhero, so yeah. Um, this proves my point once again. Like in the first one, Dark Knight Returns, uh, he takes on Superman with using strategy. Like in the first one, he just takes him down with a, a super suit and a super strong shocker and takes him down that way, but he knows this time that's not going to work. So, you know, in the beginning of this, you don't even see Batman in the beginning. You see his sidekick, who's now Catwoman, but in the first one she was the Robin, and uh, this one now she's you know the new Catwoman is his sidekick. She's been grabbing you know friends of Batman like Adam. There's Adam and Flash and Green Arrow. And later, Green Lantern. But you know, you just see her and the mutants that Batman trained. They, you know, doing it all the mayhem, and they're doing it all, and they just regrouping everybody. And you don't even see Batman, or you know, hear from him. And in the show, who's on, you know, Superman's side? This is Shazam, Captain Marvel, and Wonder Woman. And Superman, he wants to just, you know, it's been a few years since the last time uh, they had their curl. And he just uh, wants to talk to Batman, but, but he wants to talk to him about breaking in. He wants to, you know, break in and her. Uh, the Batcave. And this whole time, Batman's waiting for him and has a strategy for him. At first, he tries to play this with his mind by showing some kind of T-Rex hologram and he's like, meet Fido and Superman's old please. That's not even real. So, you know, he's just playing with him at first. And, you know, plays a lot of mind games and, you know, sending another version of Bazaar. And now, now I know this is Flash 
and Green Arrow do their part. But this is all Batman's plan. This is what I'm talking about. Batman always has a strategy on to take down anybody who gets in his way, even Superman. That might be Flash, but that's Batman's uh, bombs, and this is his idea of taking Superman down from the get, you know, from the start. Flash tells him, tells him, you're, you know, you're getting, you know, slow for your, you know, even when you get up uh, for your age. And, uh, even drop some piece of Batcave on him. And Batman, Superman's like, ugh. And Green Arrow, see, this is what Batman knows, uh, what Superman's gonna do before Superman's gonna do it. That, uh, that arrow has cooking that napalm. And, Superman, Batman's like, yeah, on cue. You use your heat vision because if you didn't, the pilot would just bounce off of his chest and go thump. But he blows it up and his kryptonite napalm goes everywhere and really messes up his face for a minute. And then Adam, who can shoot down to like Adam, uh, goes in Superman's ear. And we all know Superman has super hearing, so I'm pretty sure if he starts yelling, it's going to really mess with his head and no one does see and this is where it gets interesting folks this is what I'm talking about because Batman will use his money and his brains and come up with some gadget that can take you down and BAM we got the kryptonite bat gloves new you know new on the shelves BAM BAM BOOM says Batman yeah, that's what he does. And Superman's all like, oh, I just wanted to talk. And Batman's all like, I'm done talking. Get out of my cave. Yeah. Because Batman's true over oh, a gangster. And you can't mess with the gangster. And yeah, he's just like, get out of my cave, Superman. And that's what I was always been talking about. He, he always has a plan. And he'll take you down no matter how he has to do it. It doesn't matter if he's using kryptonite. You know, Superman still is somewhat powerful after he's supposed to kryptonite. And he could have done a defense move, you know, and like flew away real slowly. But nope. Batman comes, and I'm pretty sure his gloves cost like $10 million, you know. And Batman uses his smarts to design the gloves. And... Basically, that's why Batman's the best. Because he figure out what you you know weakness is, and he spent his money to expose your weakness by building some gadget, like the really cool Kryptonite gloves. Yeah. So that's why you can't mess with Batman. He always figure out a way. Oh yeah, he beats Superman so bad. He beats him down so badly that, oh, Superman's crying and he's in an North Pole and he's crying because he can't beat Superman, Batman. And he just can't figure out and he's just like, I'm all washed up and blue. And, oh, and uh, Wonder Woman's got to kiss it all better. Oh. Isn't that sweet? So, yeah. And that goes for everybody at uh, TJ Fridays who's been, you know, making fun of me, you know. You know, they're, they're serious, but they know they keep on saying, you know, Aquaman can beat Batman or Thor can beat Batman. You know, the poop's in the pudding and pudding's on the floor. So, when well, next time you guys want to, you know, Say something, I'll let you watch my video, and uh, from now on, when you guys say anyone says anything, it'll just be like, blop, 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 because I put it right there. Batman's the best, and he's the best in the rest. So, now I got that off my chest, let's talk about, yeah, well, in two weeks, Holly Quinn, 
her solo comic book comes out, and there's a big reason why I want to talk. I want to talk about her, uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. I want to talk about Holly Quinn. People who don't know who Holly Quinn is, she's Batman, uh, Joker's sidekick and real lovable villain uh, to everybody who reads the comic books. She made her first debut uh, mainly in the animated series, Batman the Animated Series. And it came out in the early 90s. And she starts out, she was, uh, you know, Joker's psychiatrist in Arkham, uh, Arkham Asylum. And she was his psychiatrist and Joker played mind games with her. Making her think, you know, and talk about how his dad beat him, and uh, then you know how how you way he is ain't his fault, and she falls in love with the Joker. She falls in love with the Joker and dresses up in a jester suit and breaks him out, and and after that, they're I want to say they're inseparable, but Joker uses everybody, even you know the people who love him the most. He, you know, pawn him off in a second to get away from Batman, or he, you know, whatever Harley Quinn does something wrong, he might slap her around, but she, she always comes back to her pudding, which, which she calls Joker pudding, and no matter what Joker does to her, she comes back to him, and this is her solo comic book that's going to come out in two weeks. Um, I wanted to bring her up because... Uh, I found out oh, I had a, a family get together I had this recently. Uh, my second cousin Brittany, who's a teacher, dresses up as Holly Quinn just because uh, her you know, husband is playing a video game and she didn't know any look her, you know, dresses her. She looked up her origin. She knew who how, how exactly who Holly Quinn was and where she you know began and it made me feel good. That she would, you know, go as far as looking up and really caring about the character she was dressing up as for Halloween. And she's a, she teaches uh, fifth grade, I believe. And that gave me an idea to bring this up. I knew also doing this show to get people in the comic books. So, for all of you teachers out there, you know, who need the, you know, kids to do book reports and stuff like that. It may be a little bit easier to get them to do a book report. You know, people say comic books ain't literature, but I have all the proof right here that comic books is a literature. I mean, right here is a graphic novel of the Justice League, uh, the new Justice League that Batman puts together. Oh yeah, there's another thing I wanted to talk about earlier. Uh, this is because no one tells Superman what to do in the Justice League. Doesn't mean, you know, he's in charge. Batman's in charge of the Justice League. But, alright, back to this. This is, uh... This is, like... 200 pages long. And... These books here are, like, 300 pages long. They might, you know, have pictures telling the story, but there's a story in them. And uh, this is long in any book... And this is long as any book you would pick up without any pictures. You know, you got Punisher, you got Batman, you got all a bunch of graphic novels, you know, that used to be paperback, but then they took the whole story and put it all together to save you money. Uh, so, I know a teacher that does this at the fantasy shop, she has them, you know, her kids do put reports on, you know, graphic novels and comic books. And I think it would be a good idea, you know. Have the kids, have the boys do Batman. And have the kid, uh, the girls do The Wizard of Oz. But, uh, you have them, you know, do book reports on that. He might not have to, you know, push so hard to get them to read. And it really, really would be a good idea for all teachers out there. So, keep that in mind next time you, when you get your kids to read some books. Uh, I think it would be a good idea. You can always use my suggestions and all those other ones out there. Alright, so, now we got her out the way. 
Um, I guess we can. Uh, it's going to be a shorter show today. I'm after we talk. Now we're going to talk about the Beakley. All right. Today's Weekly, we got is a Detective Years Up Zero. This is continues the story of Year Zero, where Batman first not even just get is this big, you know been started, but so is Jim Gordon, Commissioner Gordon, his friend, and this story is about it. just uh, Commissioner Gordon and him dealing with crooked cops, and just. A big, uh, this big story for him is a really good story about him dealing with the crooked cops and dealing with, uh, Gotham City and just straightening out, uh, Gotham PD. It's a really good story. I liked it a lot. Then we got, uh, Spider-Man. This is the sequel. This is a two. It's two out of five. You know, this is the 99 problems I told you about in an earlier episode. This is where Arcade, uh, who does uh, basically his name speaks for itself. He does. He creates generated games and death that you know that deadly to the superheroes and. And this one, he's fighting some villains in the airplane. You know, he's not on an airplane, but it seems like he's in an airplane. The Spider-Man, you know, and this is him fighting some villains in a closed spot, you know, up in the sky. It's a pretty, it, it, pretty, it was okay, but I know it picks up better. And I know it's starting to pick up, but it's only the second one. Here's another one by Frank Miller. Robocop's Last Stand. This is a uh, story. It's four out of eight. This is four out of eight. And this is uh, Robocop. Um, basically, all the Detroit cops, like 90% of them are now corrupt. And they're trying to get Rob Robocop and just take over the Detroit city itself. And this is a story about him standing up to all the cops in Detroit as Robocop. And so far, so good. I uh, can't wait for the next one to come out. Next on the list is the Phantom X. This is the Phantom X uh, second issue of Phantom X Max. You know, uh, in the first issue, he was trying to protect the, uh, the very last species of an alien species. Uh, and this is just him going through space and coming in contact with other species and protecting them and just going flying through space is a good story. Next, now we talk about this is the this is the last stand. This is you know I told you about Galactus eating the Ultimate Universe. Uh, Eating the whole Ultimate Marvel Universe, and this is the superhero standing up to him, and because he's on planet Earth now, and he's starting to eat the Earth and the, uh, the whole universe. Uh, if you, uh, I mentioned it a little bit before, but the Ultimate Universe is another Marvel universe that's you know, and all the superheroes' origins are real different, and it makes them. You know, they try to make him, you know, ultimate and cool, you know, and just try to suck, you know, more money out of you by telling more stories. Uh, like I said, the movies that you've been watching, uh, The Avengers, based on Ultimate Avengers, is Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man, is Dennis Leary, that's Ultimate Spider-Man. And all the movies that are out right now, except for Wolverine, that's not, that's regular Wolverine. Uh, is Ultimate. Like, that's where Ultimate Avengers, that's where uh, Nick Fury came from. And, uh, everyone who's reading comic books are used to the, uh, the old, grumpy old man who, you know, has an eye patch and has 
you know, smokes a cigar. Uh, that's the version we're used to, but an Ultimate series is the Samuel Jackson version of Nick Fury, uh, you know, in the movies. And then there's also Iron Patriot is uh, in the Ultimate series. And in the Marvel series, the original Game Goblin, Norm Osborn, who comes back, because, you know, we all think he died as the first movie shows the Green Goblin, but he has, you know, regener he regenerates and comes back. And after the Secret Invasion, he becomes tries to do superhero, and he puts on the same suit that Iron Patriot is wearing, but he put on the suit first. And then, in the Ultimate Universe, Iron Patriot puts on the same suit. And it's the same suit. It's the same powers. And uh, it's pretty much the same person, same idea, but different person wearing the suit. Uh, but this is the this is the going to be the end of the Ultimate Universe, and this is all the big honchos who are left going to you know, try to stop Galactus, the planet eating monster. All right, now then we got All My Doctors versus Hack and Slash. Hack and Slash is just the same idea as Ash. She fights, you know, zombies and ghouls and goblins. And then this is their team up. And this is the third of their team up. And so far, so good. They're just battling uh, demon warriors right now. And they're just going to keep on chopping and slashing ghouls and goblins. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good read. There's not much to it, it's just slashing goblins. And then, now see, this is, I had to get this cover, five hour cover, it's the Deadpool. This is the Deadpool variant of Amazing X-Men. This is the return of our version of Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler, who he you know, died a couple of years ago. Killed, I think he was killed by, um, he was k killed by Sabretooth. And, uh, he's back. And there's a show, and this, uh, this cover is the Deadpool variant. Deadpool, so popular, like, he, he makes appearance just in covers. And it's, uh, uh, it's a funny right here. There's a whole bunch of little Deadpools say, welcome back, Nightcrawler. And I had to get it, even though Deadpool's not even in the comic book. He's not in it. He's just so awesome, they gotta put him in, like, oh, all these covers that he has nothing to do with. And X-Men is just about uh, Nightcrawler and do it. He's a, a pirate ship and he meets up with his dad. Does it show how he makes his comeback? It's okay story. You know, it's worth your read. It's not, you know, awesome good. It's, not, it's, 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 you know, worth the read. And I just had to get it. Mainly I had to get it because of the Deadpool cover. And, alright. And then there's Forever Evil. Forever Evil. Uh, and this, this is Forever Evil fighting over territory. Lex Luthor is basically... His team uh, taking on the uh, Unjustice League. The Unjustice is like, forget all you supervillains. We're the supervillains. We're the ones in charge. And Lex Luthor and the rest of the villains are like, nah, uh, -uh. And so this is them fighting over who's gonna uh, be the new king since the villain, since the uh, uh, superheroes are taking a break, as we know. And it's a good read. And that's this week's weekly. Um, it was a short show today. You know, I have more to talk about next week. Next week, uh, we're going to do what we did this week, next week, because Gavin was sick. And I want to do a segment called uh, My Two Cents, where I talk about other comic book uh, TV shows on the YouTube and I added my two cents. So that's gonna be next week. So that's our show for the right now. Uh until then, remember 
This cool comic book, cool, uh, coolest comic book basement. I'm Jason Cool, and that's what's up.